Hey there, folks. So I've got this uh, new amp here. I believe this is from Cloud Game Store, and I've got one of their speakers here uh, that we'll be using with it. This is for a Game Boy Advance SP console. Um, I'm going to be installing it into a slate just to uh, double check the compatibility, though I am 100% sure it should fit into a normal SP, so I think this should be a little bit more informative. Um, I don't think we should run into any clearance issues whatsoever. In fact, we're going to be installing it into a model that has already been modified with um, other mods here. Uh, so, I guess word of warning before we get started here. Um, amps aren't magic. They make everything louder. These consoles, uh, especially the older models, uh, SPs are a little bit better in my experience, but not always. Um, Game Boys don't have very good audio. Like it's, it's kind of it's kind of a thing. These consoles were designed down at a cost, and they were designed for children. They were designed to be quiet, and they were designed to be good enough, and they were designed to be cheap. All right. So you can install an amp, but if there's any, you know, noise coming from your console, you know, any any speaker buzzing, anything like that, this is going to make that louder too. There are some mitigations you can take. The most effective one is cleaning the power switch. Um, I see a lot of people slinging those power cleaner mods, but those are in my experience almost entirely snake oil and in fact cause other issues. Um, so we're not going to be doing any of that stuff today. In fact, if, if you've installed one of those power cleaners and you notice your, your Game Boy is starting to act a little funny, maybe look a little bit more closely at that power cleaner. Um, you know, such as you turn it on and then it blinks off and you have to turn it back off and on again. That's your power cleaner. You turn it on and the fuse pops. That's your power cleaner. Um, I don't recommend them. But anyway, amp. So before we begin... There are two things I want to discuss regarding compatibility. I have two damaged boards here. We're not going to be using either of them, but I think they provide a good reference for um, the different models of SP. Uh, now, both of these boards are AGS-001 consoles, but this does not matter. Um, it is This amp is fully compatible with all SP models. Um, in fact, the audio circuitry is pretty much the same on AGS-101 models as this board here. Um, so if it works on this board, it'll work on all of them, but since this board doesn't work, we're not going to test it anyway. Uh, <laughs> this board has no audio to begin with. Uh, but anyway, so there are two different models here. This applies to AGS-101 and 001 models, but there's the three-chip models and the one-chip models. Uh, I call them that because the three chip model has one, two, three chips. Uh, this one is the power management IC, this one is the charge controller for the battery, and this one is the amplifier. If you look at the markings on this thing, um, you'll have to take my word for it, I guess. Uh, this is actually the exact same amplifier module out of a regular Game Boy Advance, so if, you know, fun fact, if for our any reason you're having trouble with this amp, you can just swap them back and forth between models. It's it's cross, it's cross. literally the same part. Later on in the lifespan of the SP, um, if we look at the date codes on these things, um, here we go. This thing was made in 2004. I forget the, um, the dot codes, but either way, it's a relatively early model for a one oh, or a late model for a 001. And this bad boy is also 2000. Oh, nope, this one's 2003, excuse me. Um, I'm guessing this was made October of 2003, so very late in the year. Um, if we look at the codes on the CPUs, you know, this one is 2004, week 11. This one is 2004, week 43. Yeah, they're, they're very close to manufacturing date, but all they did for the one chip models is they combined these three chips. So this chip here on the one chip model controls the power management, it generates power for the console itself and the LCD, uh, it handles battery charging, and it handles audio amplification. This is relatively common on newer devices. Um, you know, smartphones and, and, and the like do this exact same thing. Um, 
It's compatible with both models. It does not matter which one you have since most of the points that you're soldering to are these test pads, which are in the exact same place for both models. Uh, the only exception is the amp also has to be soldered to these little capacitors right here, which are not present on the one chip model. Uh, but you just have to solder it, I believe, to this via right here. Uh, so you just got to run a little little jumper wire and um, then it works out the same. So for ease of install, this is the preferred model, but it works with both. Inside this console, I'm pretty sure I have a three chip model, so that's what we're going to be using. Uh, but I just wanted to show that off so that you guys are aware in case you decide to embark on this on your own and your console does not look the exact same as mine does. Um, so that being said, let's begin. Here is a quick sample of what my stock audio circuitry sounds like. It's fine, a little quiet. Um, I don't notice any noise with the thing, but it's also um, about 18 inches away from me. And like I said, these things are pretty quiet. So if I put it up to my ear, I can detect a little bit, you know, very, very, very faint buzzing. Um, it's just kind of how these consoles work. Like the whole idea was, you know, it's, it, it, it's a kid's toy. You don't normally want kids toys to be loud. At least I find myself as a um, older man who used to use these things a lot. I don't like listening to other people's stuff. So I'm glad that Nintendo did this. But anyway, it's fine, but it can be louder. So let's make it louder. Uh, do, do, do. I have to take the battery out first. So like I said, I'm doing this in a slate. It should be the exact same process as an SP. Um, just doing it in a slate to double check the compatibility because even though I don't really care for it, I'm sure that is a personal opinion that not everyone shares. So if you want more audio, louder audio in your slate, then um, let's see if this is the, uh, the way to go. Good lord. There we go. I forgot how to use a screwdriver, apparently. So slate consoles use an OEM SP rear housing on the back, and we use five of the six screw posts. We use the four corners and then the one in the uh, cartridge slot. We do not use the screw post in the battery compartment, um, but otherwise... Pretty much the same. Pull that off. Might as well turn on my soldering iron. Totally forgot to do that. And I need to disconnect the screen so I can get this out of the case, which means that I'm gonna pull the back off here. And this specific case is one of the sample brass, brass models uh, that we had made. It is sandblasted media blasted and then clear coated so that it does not um, patina, which I don't necessarily agree with, but because of the clear coat, it's a little bit tighter and a little bit more difficult to get apart. Um, the aluminum ones handle quite a bit better or the ones that have had the clear coating stripped off are also pretty good, um, but it's not too bad to, to get apart, he says, as he's clearly struggling with it. Just gotta get some leverage in there and then it comes right apart. Oh. <laughs> comes right apart, he says, huh? So. should see about just shaving down these edges here and here if I'm going to be taking this thing apart but I never planned on doing it it just kind of happened so here we are anyway 
Um, that aside, once you have the normal SP apart, you don't have to deal with this backplate nonsense on a normal SP. Uh, you've got three more screws in the motherboard. Um, slates are, of course, all the same uh, Phillips screw. I believe these are Phillips, not JIS. I'm using a JIS driver, though, because JIS works in Phillips, no problem. Uh, but an SP, a normal SP, is going to use three JIS screws in the motherboard, and then the surrounding screws that I already took out would have been uh, the tri-wing nonsense. Okay, and I don't need to disconnect this, I just need access to this thing. I highly, highly recommend you disconnect yours but I trust in my ability, and realistically, if I hit this shell with my soldering iron, you know, this is, this is brass. Nothing's gonna happen. But if you're using a plastic housing, you're gonna destroy it, so be careful. Um, yep, there we go. This is a three-chip model, as I speak did. Um, and like I said, I've already got the LED mod in here, but, it should be fully compatible. Um, if you're doing what I'm doing, which I don't recommend, I don't, stacking mods like this doesn't always work out. Um, in fact, this is gonna be a little bit tight, but I think we'll make it work. It should still fit. That feels like it's lower than that chip anyhow. Um, I don't recommend stacking mods like this. These consoles were designed around a specification, and each time we modify the specification, it stresses out the internal components just, just a little bit more. And, you know, at some point, the, um, at some point, too much is too much. Uh, so that's, that's specifically why I'm trying it and why I don't recommend you try it. But anyway, looks like we should be good. There is one via that is covered up. So we might have to get a little bit creative. Let's see here, do I need? Oh, I don't even need that one, how convenient. Okay, so if you're using the one chip model motherboard, um, you need access to Is it, yeah, okay. You need access to this copper area right here. Um, there isn't really any accessible way to get to this other than this via underneath the start and select membrane. I don't recommend soldering to that one because that's gonna make the membrane sit funky. So the instructions recommend scratching a little bit of the mask up here instead, and then soldering to that. A screwdriver is not the proper tool for this, but this is a dead board and I just don't care. Um, but just scratch it up like that and then you can solder to it no problem. But this is below the um, LED mod. So this model is not compatible with the amp and the LED mod, pick one or get creative with your wiring. But that being said, this model doesn't need that because we can solder right to these capacitors, so. It's just a matter of getting this lined up and then getting it soldered down. Uh, I think the most difficult part to align is going to be these two vias over to the left. So I'm going to start by pre-tinning these. We want the SP and the A, G, and D via. They're nicely labeled. Be sure to check the instructions on the listing. I'm gonna start by pre-tinning these. And then I can drop this board into place and it should self-center over those two vias. Well, I guess not. There's not enough vias for it to do that, but. It still connects up, no problem. I'm gonna add a little bit more solder to both of these just to really ensure that there's a good solid connection. There's those two vias and then I need to solder to, ooh, I got the alignment just a hair off. Let's fix that. <laughs> Try 
try that again. Excellent. And then I need... Ooh. Uh, I definitely should have tinned that first. I wasn't thinking about that. Highly recommend tinning this capacitor. You need the solder too. Luckily, the LED board also uses that via, so it just has a pass through. Touch that up a little. And what am I missing? I think that's it. should be it. I think we're good to go. Um, this kind of floats around, but it has the two springboard pads for the speaker, so should be good where it is. Let's get my solder put away. And we're going to use a replacement speaker instead of the OEM one. The OEM one is a half watt, or is it a quarter watt? I can't remember. Um, I don't know, doesn't matter. This is a one watt speaker. This is more powerful. This is gonna put up with our shenanigans a little bit better. Uh, leave that in there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna remove it. I always recommend leaving this in place because it does help protect the speaker. But in this particular case, I, I chose red specifically because I think you'd be able to see it through the speaker holes a little bit and I think red will look neat in here. Um, and also, I'm going to do one more mod that is totally, entirely unrelated. And I'm just swapping out the buttons because I don't like how these ones feel in here. And because I have it open. As you can see, they get a little bit jammed up sometimes, which is why I don't really want to use them. This is just a different brand of buttons. I'm guessing the tolerances are going to be a little bit looser on these, and it should result in a beater experience. See, look at that. Look at how much easier that comes out. Apologies also, my dexterity is severely limited today. Um, I am getting over an illness, but I think we'll, I think we'll make this work. I think we'll be good. Um, anyway, I, I started talking about this, but I think I, I think I got distracted. Um, if you're doing a whole bunch of mods to your console, do one at a time and test it between each one. That way, if something goes wrong, you have a starting point on where to troubleshoot. Though in this particular case, I don't really count swapping those buttons out as a mod, so... Hey, that feels better, and they're not getting stuck. Excellent. All right, let's try it out. I got nothing. Cool. 
So the best way to troubleshoot this is going to be with a headphone dongle. We'll see if it's the speaker or the amp or what. Um, though actually, I do know that this console had working audio, so I know I should also have working headphones. And I also don't have a dongle, convenient, so. Pop this off, see what's going on. I'm guessing this just got bumped around and wasn't making good contact. So I'm gonna tape it down. Let me get some hip tune. Oh my god, I haven't used my captain since I moved and I have literally no idea where I put it. Right, okay, we're not using captain. We're gonna use a little bit of painter's tape. I'm gonna have to find that. <laughs> just needs to hold in place while we assemble. I'm gonna put one right here. And the other. Hmm, it's too big. The other, right? Oh. See if that helps. Of course, it could also be that either the speaker or the amp is dead, though I doubt that. They're both brand new. That's progress in the wrong direction. I heard the speaker click on, but that's it. See, my buttons are working, but there's no audio and no screen. <sighs> Not feeling good about that. this into the bottom housing and drop the sh the battery in and oh it's in the shell of course Feeling so good about that. Let's try the original speaker, which I know worked. No.
Yeah, see, the console's not coming on. The power is switching on, but the console isn't. What the heck happened? Gotta love amps, am I right? I wonder if this shorted against... Well, no, this thing's coded. That couldn't have happened. Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna do some more investigation and I'll be back in a moment. All right. I got the issue figured out. I promise I'll walk you guys through it. Um, I know I know it would have been helpful if I were to film that whole process, but that took me like an hour and I genuinely had no idea what was going on. And now that I've got it figured out, it's <laughs> extremely obvious what was going on. So of course, let me walk you through it. There are two parts, I told you so. And um, well, yeah, that's all there is to it. Uh, so, when I went to troubleshooting this thing, I noticed that the LED board was switching on, but the console was not. I noticed that I'd get a very brief red LED and then it'd just power off immediately. Uh, so first thing I did was I checked with my multimeter here, put it in continuity mode, and then I put one probe against the negative battery terminal here, and then I went ahead and checked all of the voltage rails, and none of them were shorted. That's usually the problem when um, console acts like that. Um, second thing I noticed was that my battery was a little bit low, hence why this SP is now charging. Um, so, me being me, I decided, I, I decided, you know what, let's, let's just swap out batteries. I had another SP on my desk with the battery in it. Um, this is the battery that was in here. It's only been charging about five minutes, but you notice the console comes on, green light, everything's happy, battery wasn't dead. Um, the battery that was in this console, however, was fully charged and is now in here, and my console still wasn't booting. So, on to the next thing. I figured, oh, well that's weird. Let's try charging it and seeing what happens. It wouldn't charge. The light comes on for about a second and then shuts off. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, I know that issue. I never actually checked to see if this console charges. And I know that I put it together with um, um, known bad consoles. I don't know, I have a, I have a box full of SP motherboards that I was pulling to show off the different models. And that's where this board came out of originally. So I figured, you know what? It's entirely possible that this thing has never charged because I have at least one slate that does not charge and I put zero effort into fixing it. Um, it's honestly just a display. And I figure, you know, if I ever want it to boot, I'll just put a charged battery in it and Bob Jaunty. But, um, Nope, that wasn't it either. The easiest way to check and see if it's charging is to put your multimeter one side on the bottom of the fuse and then the other side on the right of this diode here. This is written up in the wiki. Um, but you notice my multimeter is showing full continuity. And so that's when I put my multimeter on the fuse and noticed that my fuse was showing uh, 20 milliamps continuity. So I have replaced this fuse, um, and if I measure it, you can see I'm getting about 0.9, though that could just be flux residue on there. Whereas if I measure the original one, I still get continuity. Maybe, if I can even measure it. It's kind of difficult when these things aren't soldered down. No, I don't think that's happening. Oh, there we go. You saw that briefly, 20.3 milliamps. So even though my fuse was still conducting, it has a resistance of 20 ohms, which I don't want to do the math on that, but I don't have to. I know that my battery at 3.7 volts through a 20 ohm resistor must have been dropping enough voltage to trigger the low battery shutdown. So I replaced the fuse and now everything's working. 
Ta-da! Green power light. <laughs> so, that being said, um, remember how I mentioned at the beginning um, power cleaners tend to pop your fuse and blah blah blah? Well, audio amps are also very high in rush, so same deal, really. Um, it damaged my fuse without fully blowing it, which was, was remarkable. I've seen that once before. I... Uh, this is twice now, so maybe, maybe I'll actually remember this step in the future. But that's just wild to me that a fuse can blow like that, but not totally blow. I guess it must have been just enough current to start weakening the bond, but not enough current to blow it completely. Wild. Anyway, I now have a higher spec and resettable fuse in here. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have the correct size fuse, so I kind of installed it crooked. Um, that was intentional, because if I installed it straight, it would have been covering one of the pads. So what I did was I just scratched the solder mask above one of the vias to the left of the pad, which is... Con contiguous with the pad itself, and then just installed it at an angle because this is a 1206 uh, fuse, and I believe the SP calls for a 603 fuse, 0603, which is quite literally half the size of what I installed. So it's what I had. I don't recommend it. I will link to the proper part in the description and maybe one day actually buy them so I have them on hand, but today is not that day. Um, so let's go ahead and get this thing reassembled. <laughs> After all that. Just yet, yet another reason why I don't like audio amps, but hey, at least it gave me a puzzle to work out. <sighs> okay, let's get this reinstalled here. I've still got that little bit of tape holding the ribbon in place so that it lines up with the speaker. I have no idea why it was partially working before, but I suspect it's related to that fuse. Um, I'm thinking it was just going through some weird low power nonsense and maybe Maybe I managed to short it out and that's what happened. I don't know. But either way, now that it's got a new fuse, it does seem to be working. Uh, make sure all of my buttons have proper clearances. Toss battery in there and... Bob Jaunty, you hear that crunchy audio? It's nice and loud. <laughs> Oop. Helps if I don't move the battery, but you get the idea. It's working. Let's reassemble it. I just wanted to do a quick test, make sure I'm not pinching any of the buttons or membranes with these wires because I did. I was not careful when I reinstalled this. I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, but I think we're gonna be all right. So this goes in here. I shouldn't have installed all of the screws yet. Just loosen that one, see if I can angle this in there. Excellent. And two screws for oh, these two. I guess not, doesn't really matter which screws go where, they're all the same. I try to reinstall these top two screws in the same place every time, um, just because my prototype that I actually play on most of the time, uh, the screw position was slightly different and the screws actually stick out of that chamfer, so the tops of the screws are worn off and I don't know, I just... I want it to match. <laughs> I want it to go back to go back together the same every time, you know. All right, I'll set these aside. These are perfectly good buttons, just not for a slate. 
and let's swap out these shoulders while I'm here, just in case. Excellent. So one of the weird things about these funny playing shoulder buttons is they can get kind of jammed on the casing. Though in all fairness, this is not a funny playing case. So I don't know if the problem is on funny playing side or whoever made this case. Um, but these buttons don't do that. So I'm a little bit happier with that. And they look and feel the same otherwise, so I'm good with that. In case you happen to watch the video where I installed the um, LED mod and new power switch as well, just so I have the full set in there aside from the brightness button because the brightness button is evil and we don't care about it here. Boom. The brightness button is fine. I just, I think it ruins the aesthetic otherwise, is all. And because I can't leave well enough alone, I have to expand upon that, even though it's totally irrelevant. Um, just look at how far off it is compared to the rest of the buttons. If it were down here between them, it would be different, but it's so far up. I just, I don't know. I, I think it would have meant I would have had to extend the length of the console so much just to clear the screen and I don't know, wasn't worth it to me. I prefer to get rid of it. Especially because realistically, how much do you use that button? Like with a modern backlight kit that actually stores your settings and restores them upon reboot, like, Seems more like a set and forget thing, but um, anyway, it comes on. Eh, eh, eh. Turn that all the way up. <laughs> we get a nice little fart and some crunchy audio. Let's pop a game in. I said, let's pop a game in. I made this case. This is a really cool case. The game I put in here is not a very good game. <laughs> and of course, it's the one I picked for the demo. All right. So I guess we're not gonna have a one-to-one. -one. Battery's already red. But there you go. There's the amplified audio. It's nice and loud. It is very loud. It is very crunchy. I can hear all of the SP nonsense now. Um, but it, it's also loud. Um, if you scroll back the video, you can probably hear do a one-to-one, -one, um, but since it was a different audio track playing, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. But I'll give you a hint. I'm talking a lot more loudly to talk over this thing. I didn't have to do that before it was amplified. For comparison, here is an unamplified 
SP. One of these days I'll finish this game. A little bit more reasonable, a lot easier to talk over, but not nearly as loud. So as long as you're fine with having the crappy audio but louder, um, yeah, I guess it seems pretty fine. Um, just keep in mind that you also might have to service that fuse. I don't know if that's a... I don't know why I had to do that. that I can't explain that, but it does work. And now that we've had it replaced, it seems fine. And I'm fairly certain it charges just fine. Yep. Easy peasy. How you like them apples? I've still got my LEDs. Got my nice loud audio. Got my normal controls here. Oh, and you know what? Let's test one more thing. I have this thing here. Yep. And let's try out audio. I am fairly certain this amp does nothing for headphones. But let's find out. Oh. Just tangled the crap out of my earbuds. Yeah, that sounds about the same as it usually does. I don't know where the microphone is on on this device, but I don't know. You'll have to take my word for it, but it seems fine. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is, oh, this is a knot. Okay, so this is that amp. Um, I got it from Retro Game Repair Shop, but Cloud Game Store makes and sell, sells these. I will go ahead and throw some links into the description. Um, it is very, very inexpensive um, compared to a lot of the other amps that I've seen. This thing is like, I don't know. It's, I, I have no idea what Retro Game Repair Shop's gonna be selling them for, but you can get this and a speaker for like less than 10 bucks directly from Cloud Game Store. Um, if you purchase from Retro Game Repair Shop, of course, it is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it is shipping from the US. Um, not to mention if you need any customer support, you go through Retro Game Repair Shop instead of Cloud Game Store. And there's one less language barrier to deal with, so it's a little bit easier in that case. But if you just want the lowest price possible, then of course you can go directly with Cloud Game Store. It's exact same product um but otherwise you know what for what it is it's fine it works i personally don't like amps but that's me you don't have to share the same opinion that is quite all right and it works in slates with the led button mod from funny playing so if you want to mix and match stuff and make your ultimate 2024 meme then um I guess go for it, but I mean, it's it's not like I didn't have problems installing this, but now that I figured out the problem, um, hopefully it should go a little bit smoother for you. And um, I guess that's about all I've got. Yeah, thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this my way to check out. Um, it's pretty neat. I like the simplicity of the mod. I like how easy it was to install, um, troubleshooting nonsense aside, and it should be a relatively small footprint. 
I really should have checked the power usage beforehand, because uh, now if I check the power usage, I'm not going to have anything to compare it against. But according to the listing, it is very low power, so I'll have to take their word for it. Um, low power is relative, however. This is going to tank your battery life. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, if you install a whole bunch of mods, like if you want to do your ultimate 2024 Game Boy with all of the mods and then some, you know, like I said earlier, these, these consoles were designed down to a budget with a very specific power envelope. And the more you exceed that power envelope with things like an IPS kit, you know, button LEDs, a flash cart in your cart slot, stuff like that, the more you stress out the components, and as you saw, I burned through that fuse just trying to boot this thing up. So I haven't even tried it with a flash cart yet. Let's actually, let's try that. How about? I have an Easy Flash Omega, not the definitive edition. of it. Yeah. Love them. Love it. I think there's games on this. Yeah, sure. Adventure Red. Fire Red Rocket. Crown Beta. How about an old beta? It's a neat game. I like the art style, if nothing else. Oh, there it goes. I mean, it works. I don't hear any extra sound, but notice my LED is red once again. It was green on the other game. It could have also just barely crossed, crossed the threshold, so I don't know. I don't think there was a save file, so I think we gotta watch this. Anywho. At about halfway, it sounds about stock, so. Suppose that do work. I do believe that is my name, yes, thank you. But, yeah, seems good. Find two sailors in Seaside City. Excellent. I can do that. I'm not going to, but I can. Yes, I suppose I will participate with the main point in this game. Anyway, yeah, I guess it's good. Let's save so that I don't have to do that again next time. And because this is an original Omega, I can't shut it down immediately, but I'm sure more than enough time has already elapsed. It's really quick, um, but either way, there we go. Um, all right. Links in the description. Thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop. Catch you all next time.